Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is incredible or whenever you happen to be watching and you know that if I'm spending time with my girl Ivy the Green Anaconda, I'm having a good start to my day. She's my spirit animal. She is an absolute beauty and I want to talk to you guys about the largest snakes in the world. Now most people think that green anacondas or the anaconda is the largest snake in the world. And you're half right, okay? The fact is, is that they're not the longest snake in the world, but they are the heaviest bodied snake in the world. They certainly can get absolutely massive. There's been rumors of them up to 300 pounds. Now, typically, they rarely get over 16 foot, although a giant one might be 18 or 19 foot. I'm not sure that there's ever even been an anaconda that has been over 20 foot, to be totally honest with you, but they certainly can get huge. As a matter of fact, I was up at Alligator Alley in Wisconsin and he has an anaconda I couldn't even pick up. I mean, legitimately, I tried. Hey, where are you going, Ivy? Where's the girl going? And of course, you guys know that I love my girl, Ivy. But I'm telling you what, even her getting on me right now, I'm gonna go ahead and stand up, see if I can't pick her up. Oh my gosh, I cannot tell you how unbelievably heavy just this animal is here. And she's only 85 pounds. I mean, she's definitely gonna get at least twice this weight, maybe even three times this weight. And pretty soon in the next couple days, we're gonna feed her a giant meal. And I'll talk more about why I do that. But listen, there's really four giant snakes in the world. Now granted, there's a big snakes like king cobras and scrub pythons. But I'm talking four giant snakes that can exceed 150, sometimes even 200 pounds. And certainly the anacondas are definitely one of them and the green anacondas are oftentimes get the bad rap of being the meanest killers and stuff like that yeah, as you can see that's just not the case I mean a beautiful animal like ivy here is unbelievable but once again honestly not the largest snake the heaviest snake for sure the reticulated python win the actual battle for the length of snakes and we're gonna get into a reticulated python here pretty soon but just look at that that slow tongue that methodical thing, so curious. I mean, I'm telling you what guys, I've said this a million times. I've been working with snakes since I was a kid and I have never ever experienced anything like this animal here. I mean, she is incredible so curious, so friendly. Literally, I go in her enclosure, you guys have seen it, she'll just crawl right up to me and she'll just hang out with me. I mean, she is absolutely wonderful. So for anyone that thinks the green anaconda is a killer, you've been watching too many movies, guys, because these guys are unbelievable, especially when they're F2, F3, F4 generation, which basically just means out of the wild, right? So we're breeding them tamer and tamer. And you can imagine when Aries and Ivies has babies that they will be so docile because behind behavior does pass down. I tell you, green anacondas, definitely the giants, definitely the legend, definitely the iconic giant snake. But again, not the longest snake in the world, just the heaviest snake in the world. And then of course, like I mentioned, there's reticulated pythons like my girl Daisy here, who's over 18 foot. Now I would take out Lucy, but she's actually in that stage of shed right now where she's probably gonna shed later on today, tomorrow by the latest. So if I took her out, it would break her shed. And I always talk about, it's not a problem to shed a snake when they're stuck. So if she starts to shed and she has some stuck shed and we soak her and then actually help her get that shed off, that's good. But she's not ready to shed. And if you take a snake's shed off when they're not ready to shed, that can be a problem. So we won't mess or muck with Lucy today. We're just gonna play with my girl Daisy here, my second largest snake. And again, reticulated pythons can get up to 25 foot long. So they can be giants. I mean, that's a good five to seven foot larger than an anaconda. Come on, girl! I tell you what, they like to move and they have a mind of their own. Very intelligent snakes, unbelievably beautiful snakes. And much like I talked about when I talked about anacondas being kind of domesticated in F2, F3, F4 generations, with retics, we're probably at F6, X7 generations. And basically that just means every generation out of the wild, right? So there's maybe seven generations of reticulated pythons out of the wild. And where are you going, Daisy? Come on, monkey. Oh my gosh, she is such a big snake. When you get involved with giant snakes like these, holy cow, that's a lot. Oh my gosh, she's wearing me out. There's no doubt about that. But the fact is, is that every generation out of the wild is typically tamer and tamer. And oh, she's got a good tight squeeze on me right now, girl. Okay, she's just hanging on to me like a tree. And I've always said that when you're dealing with big snakes, especially something like 
a reticulated python or an anaconda, oftentimes they'll kind of squeeze on you. And for someone that's not comfortable, they would think that they're trying to kill you, right? What they're doing is she's just trying to hold on to me like a tree. She's using me as a branch, right? And she is absolutely amazing. Unbelievable snakes, reticulated pythons, crazy cool, but definitely the true giants of the reptile world. I mean, literally 25 foot. When you talk largest snake in the world, you better be talking about reticulated pythons. Now with that being said, not every reticulated python is going to be a giant, you know? They're not all going to be 20, 25 foot long. Even with Lucy and Daisy, which are siblings, they're both 12 years old. We hatched them here ourselves, so we've had them since they were just tiny babies. But Lucy is two and a half foot longer and all, you know, maybe 75 pounds larger, right? And they're siblings. I mean, just think about that. But then you have animals like Al here, which are still what they call the mainland version, right? Which are the giant snakes. But he is you know, eight years old and he's only about 12 foot long. Now sometimes males will stay a little bit smaller, like this 10 or 12 foot. Sometimes males will still get 18 to 20 foot. I've seen some giant male reticulated pythons. But the fact is Al probably won't get a whole lot larger just because he doesn't have the food response that a large female, or when we are feeding him a decent amount, seems like he doesn't put it into growth as much. And that's just the way it is. Not to mention we've talked about before that there's insular islands of reticulated pythons that sometimes can stay under six foot long. So the actual reticulated python is the longest snake in the world, but not every reticulated python is going to be the longest. Every individual is different, right? Some people are six foot five, some people are five foot eight. It's just the way it is. Every snake is an individual, but definitely retics take the cake when it comes to the giant snakes. But don't let that fear you off. If you're like, I want a reticulated python because they're amazing. You just have to choose wisely if you want something that only gets 10 or 12 foot. Because listen, Al is absolutely incredible. I honestly don't have any anything else to say about reticulated pythons other than the fact that Night Fury just shed out yesterday and looks ridiculous. I mean, look at the shimmer and sheen on that animal, the iridescence, the rainbow coming through this. Oh my goodness. I tell you what, this snake is definitely one of the most stunning snakes that I own anywhere. I mean, literally every single person that comes into the Reptarium is always blown away, especially when he's fresh shed. I mean, that is crazy cool. And that's one of the things that's amazing about reticulated pythons is the designer morphs that are out there. I mean, there are hundreds of different color phases of this animal. I mean, it's just absolutely incredible to me. And you know, there's pied reticulated pythons. Can you imagine when you get a night fury into a pied where you have that black shiny, shimmery iridescence, and then you also have the white of the pie. Ooh, doggy, I tell you what, there's a lot of cool retics gonna come. Too bad they get 18 or 20 foot, and it's kind of hard to have a huge colony of them. If these guys were this size, oh my gosh, they'd be the coolest snake on the planet. And then of course, there's the Burmese pythons. I've mentioned so many times that I think of them as the puppy dog of the giant snake world. And it's just because they're a little bit more mellow, right? You know, the retics are always on the go. Uh, obviously, anacondas aren't oftentimes as mellow as ivy is. And then of course, the rock pythons that we'll talk about in a minute are definitely not the tamest and most calm animals, there's no doubt about that. But Burmese really can, especially captive bred. Getting back to what I was talking about, about generation after generation of breeding, these guys have been around and probably been bred longer than any of the other giant snakes. And you know, giant snakes aren't for everybody. There's no doubt about that. You know, I, I've been keeping giant snakes since I was 15 years old, but I don't necessarily think that a lot of people should keep giant snakes. I mean, don't get me wrong, if you have the ability, the knowledge, everything else, if you want to be safe about it, certainly I think you should have the ability to keep giant snakes. But we all know it's happened down in Florida. But let's just say that certainly the majority of the problem in Florida with the invasive species down there came from the hurricane and the fact that facilities were blown away and that's how it is. But we can't say that there's never been a giant snake that's been released in the wild. Even here in Michigan, we've had it happen a couple times where, you know, someone gets a cute cute little Burmese python or an anaconda or a reticulated python and then they get big like sunrise here and they just don't know what to do with it. So please do me a favor. If you want to enter into the giant snake world, 
It is truly an amazing journey, there's no doubt about it. But don't do it if you're not able to keep these forever. These animals get big. You know, Sunrise here is only about 10 foot long. She's gonna get about another eight foot at some point. So you have to be able to keep them, not only house them, but also be safe with them. You know, I don't think that anyone should ever handle a snake, even Sunrise aside, without someone else there, right? You know, don't do it alone because you never know what's gonna happen. Again, these guys aren't killers by any any means but you never know they're strong animals and just like I mentioned when I was holding Daisy there's times that they're just holding on like you're a tree bracing yourself and they're so strong that you can kind of almost go like holy cow am I gonna lose consciousness I've been doing it a long time so I understand how to actually deal with these animals and the fact is is that Burmese pythons are definitely amazing amazing gentle giants and because of all those years of breeding Burmese pythons of course there's a lot of color mutations you know in this case this is actually an eye Ivory Burmese python, which is a super fire or a hypo, whatever you want to call it. And they're really amazing. I mean, again, when we started breeding Burmese, there was really just the albinos and normals. Now there are dozens and dozens of mutations that are really quite amazing and new ones being produced all the time, which just means, again, if you want to get into that gentle giant, you have the ability to keep that giant snake, you can get a cool color palette that fits your needs. And certainly one of my absolute favorite mutations when it comes to Burmese pythons are the hypogranite Burmese pythons like Jeffrey here. Believe it or not, we actually brought in this second granite Burmese python that was brought in. Actually, a guy named Eric Kreider brought in a few babies, but then we brought in a yearling adult that was from the wild and uh, worked with it. And ultimately, that's where we produced our first granite Burmese python was from that particular female. Got big enough and actually produced babies. So we've been working with the granite project for a long time. And then, of course, the hypos came around. Maybe 10, 12 years ago or something like that. And then ultimately when they bred hypos together or fighters together, they produced the white snakes, which was really cool. But again, you could see the unbelievable colors and patterns that Burmese pythons have. I mean, I never thought that they would be like this when I got into them when I was just a 15 year old kid. And then, of course, there's Snaz, the normal Burmese python. These are the ones that you would see in the wild, right? This color. And the reason I want to segue that into is the last of the giant snakes, which kind of looks similar to the wild-type Burmese pythons in a way, of course, but these guys are from Africa, and that's the African rock python. Now, I actually had an African rock python for 22 years named Baby. She ended up getting like 18, 19 foot, and she was a handful. I was the only person that would actually handle her because she was definitely... A little aggro, I'm not gonna lie to you. You open up their enclosure and she would come charging out after you. And they have giant teeth. I mean, some of the biggest teeth of the giant snakes. And just like I was talking about how over time we're actually breeding to uh, kind of get them tamer, right? F3, F4 generations. I think the reason why rock pythons are probably more aggro is they haven't really been bred in captivity nearly as much. You know, they can't be imported into the country. There's not a lot of bloodlines out there. And because they're a little bit hard to work with, a lot of people just aren't working with them, quite frankly. I think that they're amazing animals, and I think that if you were able to breed it maybe three, four generations in captivity, you could probably get them as tame as a Burmese python. At least I would like to think so, and I think they're really amazing. I would love to add an African rock python to the Reptarium, to be totally honest with you. That way we could represent all four of the giant species here, and it would be really cool. But the truth is, you just don't see them around hardly at all. And believe it or not, there's actually one mutation that's in the country. It's a patternless African rock python. It's almost like the green Burmese pythons, the patternless Burmese pythons, but in a rock python, which is really cool. So, hey, if anyone knows any cool rock pythons, I would like to get one. I'm not going to lie to you because I miss mine. It's probably been 10 years since mine passed away. Again, she lived for 22 years and was a pretty cool animal. I'd love to add another one, to be honest with you. But again, giant snakes are amazing. I couldn't imagine life without them. I've told people my very first snake ever was a Burmese python, just like Snaz here. How crazy is that? So all these years later, I've always had giant snakes and I love them to death. And I wouldn't want anyone to think that because they're giant and people think they're dangerous, it's just not the case. I've never been in one situation in all those years where I was nervous about my health. So as long as you're being responsible and smart and have that kind of buddy system, like I said, have someone else 
animals around when you're handling the big snakes you're always going to be safe there's no doubt about it so giant snakes are absolutely wonderful i tell you what giant snakes are amazing i mean just look at ivy and aries in there i mean they're absolutely amazing and i still am always blown away at the fact that there are these giant snakes that live in our world it's just bizarre to me but i am so thankful that i get to work with them if you enjoyed this video there's actually a playlist you can watch right here of me handling a bunch of giant snakes and lizards and stuff like that you can also subscribe to my podcast channel right up here help us get to 50,000 speaking of numbers on this side we are less than 70,000 away from 3 million can you hit that subscription button also turn your post notifications on have an absolutely wonderful day remember be kind to somebody and I promise I'll see you tomorrow